All right, everyone. So, like I said yesterday, I actually got a repacked magic box. So we're gonna open that today. So it's gonna go pretty fast. Uh, these are the cards I kind of cleaned up the mess from last night. If I remember right, I was getting really tired. <coughs> um, we're gonna go through this box. I did organize the uh, or clean up the table a little bit. Um, I did say yesterday how I was going to immediately go and research this card and what it's for. I did not do that. I was extremely exhausted, so my bed was looking very good to me. And I sleep alone, therefore, uh, yeah, I was real tired. Um, <clears throat> so I got everything cleaned up. We're going to open this up. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Um, this is so neatly packed. Um, I actually thought it was I, w I was given an, an open box. Um, but no, uh, it was, let's see here, find a good place to do it. Um, those of you that have seen these online, believe it or not, I've only opened up one other repacked box, and I actually got some pretty good crap in it. Um, there's going to be two, uh, Mythic Rares in here at the very least, I don't know what, Oop. um, but I got some really good stuff uh, out of my other reopened box, so I'm wondering what I'll get in here. So, you know, it, it's interesting. It would be interesting to know. Um, I did just wake up. Actually, I take that back. My father woke me up. My father has dementia, so I am taking care of him. <clears throat> and he also has neuropathy. And so that is, even though he's sweating... He thinks he's freezing, um, and so that causes a lot of issues in his mind, and then there's other problems, but, so I don't, I get woken up a lot. So again, you'll notice that these packs are opened, I don't know why, uh, I, this is, okay, like the third box of reopened stuff now that I think about that I've done. So I'm wondering what will be in it. Uh, I, I don't consider these professionally reopened. And again, I've only opened three boxes. Um, if you remember from yesterday, I'll open this box. Um, I use scissors cut from the top. I've received one box that was like this. Um, and it was pretty shredded. Uh, sorry, one box where they all cut like this, which is where I got the idea from. And then I received another box. Um... They had good cards in it too. That uh, the back was all shredded where you think you'd open it. Um, I don't. We'll see what we find in here. Uh, I think the scissors, scissors idea is the best thing, but people are probably afraid to do the, well, afraid to cut in the cards. But we'll see what it looks like and what I get. You notice it's changed. What uh, the packing inside? But let's see if I just get crap or if uh, I get good stuff. So. I am going to go ahead and rearrange the table a little bit so I can place this box over in this corner and we will have a working space. Alright, so first thing opening up, we get this. We'll put that over here. We get a land card. Okay, here's my mythic, I'm sorry, my rare. Uh, so we did get this last time, but my first rare, we'll put this on the rare pile. Um, <coughs> we got uncommon, uncommon, and uncommon. <coughs> see here so these are all cards we saw last night I'm gonna put this on the uncommon pile and then I will just gonna go through this pretty quickly so it will not take as much time as the first time seeing a box um, there we go so we did get a rare I expect to get receive a rare in every one of these packets um, and then again I think on the on the advertisement there's gonna be two mythic rares um, we may count them. This one seems rather light. <clears throat> um, so, see here. One of those. I land. That's two. Mythic rare. Sorry, my rare is... Again, okay, we've seen this one. So, I'll put it there. Um, it's three cards. Four, five, six, seven... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, and the 16th card. Okay, so um, he's leaving the good art. 
so we'll see what else I get in that. And so that's kind of cool. Um, so I'll put that up here with that. Um, I was really wondering what they leave, what they wouldn't leave. <clears throat> um, okay, so uh, plant, put that there. You know, I'm gonna try to go kind of kind of quick here. Uh, land, I got a foil, or as I call it, a shiny, uncommon. That's good. Okay, so we're gonna put that up here in that department, and then um. So I don't believe I. So this is a legendary creature. I'm gonna double check here. So I did not get this out of the pack I opened up last night. So let's go ahead and review this at least. Um, <clears throat> so this is a legendary creature elemental. And whenever this creature enters the battle, feel create a one one sorry zero one green plant token for each basic land you control. Uh, landfall whenever land land enters the battlefield under your control, put four one one counters on target plant you control. Actually I think I got this one. Or I got one similar. I might have just missed in here. And it's red right top. I'm not seeing it. So it might have been up there somewhere and might have had a uh, unique art to it. So now I have the other one. So that's so there is a reason to open an un, uh, unopen, uh, sorry, re uh, reopen box. So common, common, common card. Uh, no abilities. Put that there. Defender wall, green, a bird, or uh instant elemental and another ox with its uh, nice painting um okay nice art there we go i'm thinking about that again i just woke up <clears throat> um i probably get a lot of these are probably considered again i don't know what they're for but i don't want this to be too long uh oh i don't recognize this art for a land so that's pretty cool <clears throat> um for my rare, I'm getting this cleric. We got that before. I'm gonna put that on the uh, oops. Put this on the rare pile. Apparently, I clean it up and I can't find things. <coughs> um, I'm gonna move all this land over here. <coughs> so there are my three commons. I've seen those before, and then my uncommons. I'm just gonna quickly place right here because I would be surprised if we have not seen everything yet. All right, let's go ahead and do that. All right, another pack. <clears throat> so really we're trying to discover, gosh. Okay, so you guys, hopefully those who watched my last video, will see how I open up those packs and that will change for people. All right, get another one of these. I'm gonna put that up there. Uh, another land. Um, okay, here's my rare, and see here, this, yeah, okay, this is a, uh, artifact creature, uh, construct, no, const, construct, oh, Malstry, I can't, I know I can't pronounce things right now, so we did get that already, but we can put that in the rare pile, um, <clears throat> see here, uh, target creature you control against protection from colors, uh, color of your choice until the end of turn, mm. That is, let's see, creature gains. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, we hadn't seen that one yet. Merfolk, uh, we've seen this. Uh, I don't think we've, uh, no, we've seen this. Um, in fact, uh, KVAX, I might have gotten a special art of this version. But we're going to put that there, go through here. Again, we're primarily looking at the rare, but there wasn't an uncommon in there I had not seen yet. Um, <clears throat> again, just a protection of a color, but yeah. <coughs> <coughs> so, again, I like how I opened them in the last video. I recommend uh, if you are opening up packs in the same way because you're going to really notice it saves the cards. Uh, damaging them in any other way, even how this guy opened them, really uh, can damage some of the cards, even though your rare is protected. Uh, somewhat. Um, all right, so we got a token. Another forest land. Put that over here, starting to pile. I'm getting a holographic common card. 
and here is my rare. So um, I was pretty excited about this Demon Cleric, so now I have two of them. That's pretty good. Um, but I want to put this over here, and let's move on. Common, sorry, uncommon, uh, uncommon, and uncommon. We've seen those. All right, let's go ahead and go through here real quickly. Um, let's see here, let's grab another pack. Um, okay, so I have not seen this token before. Uh, so, uh, being excited about a token. Uh, at least it's something new, so that's pretty good. Again, I do like tokens. I really like this water. Uh, reminds me of one in the past, um, about 10 years ago. So, all right, and we got a holographic uh, unique art. So let's go ahead and put that with the holographics. For my um, rare, we are getting a legendary commander. This is a legendary commander we've already seen. So I now have two of them. That's good. I will sometimes keep four of them. <clears throat> and every once in a while, I, I tend to gift my friends. Um, all right. So we've seen all these com Well, Yeah, we've seen all these commons. Uh, again, this is the common I was pretty excited about. This is the, one of the new, new abilities, so let's go ahead and read this again. This creature is a beast. It has vigilance. Uh, you may put a basic land card from your hand onto the battlefield by tapping this creature. Um, and then tap... Uh, when this creature taps, return target basic land you control to your hand. So I think actually what's going on here is you tap this... And it has two tap abilities. Both occur at the same time. And you have to use both. Not just one. Um, I'm going to double check with this. But that seems to control the power of the game. Which is how much mana you have on the battlefield. Much better. Um, so I think you basically can put another one down. But you have to pick one up at the same time. So let's go ahead and put this over here. So it's not as powerful. But still it's a cool, cool effect. Alright. So here's our... Black, blue, green, um, white, oop, oh, actually, this is no ability, we're going to throw that up there, there we go, there we go, oh, another cool art, um, I don't think I've seen this one, but yeah, this is whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life, so we've seen that card, just not that, that art, alright, and then a gobby and an instant, alright, let's grab some more, uh, you notice, remember from my last packs, I like to do them in kind of an order, but these are already open, so screw the order. Let's go ahead and go through this. All right, so here we have another one of those. I'm going to get a lot of those, so we'll see how well I use them in my games. Got another cool art, and then you probably already saw this. We got a shiny. So I do like holographic, but I know they are taking up a lot of space in my binder. <laughs> and that's where I keep my rares. Uh, well, no, that's where I keep, keep my Mythic Rares and <clears throat> my uh, Planeswalkers, even my common Planeswalkers from uh, War of the Spark, I keep them in there, uh, and my Legendary Commanders. So, uh, I, I keep my uh, Foils in there as well. So, for my uh, Rare, I got this Ooze. We see saw that last time as well. So, I'm just going to place this over here. Um... Let's see here, common, common. Uh, we did see this one. Let's see, whenever it was kicked, whenever you kick a spell, uh, you gain two lives. So life gain, which is interesting, interesting because it's not white. Um, but okay, uh, and no, that wasn't racist. Um, choose both agabi, sorcery, instant. Instant, another instant, another cool art. I haven't seen this art. I really like this one as well. Again, a lot of the art in this can be really cool, really amazing. Uh, kind of reminds me of Beast Wars Transformers, though. Uh, Cheetor, um, if you can think back that far. Uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1 1 counter on this creature. So it's counter, not until a 1 1 until the end of the turn, which is really good. Alright, another Gobby Warrior and a Merfolk. So, as I said last time, I am planning a Merfolk and Goblin deck. Um, along with an unblockable deck. 
And there was that one goblin that has that oh, un unblockable ability, and I like those. So, plant, put that up there. Land, let you see that. Eh, it's fair. It's full, but it's full art. So, all right. Um, here is my rare. See, uh, be kicked. I am pretty sure I received this one. It cannot be countered, and gosh knows I like that. Uh, hexproof and haste. <clears throat> so we'll put that over here. Um, let's see here. Uncommon. I've seen all these uncommons. So let's go ahead and put them over here. And again, this is only a common, but uh, as you remember, I'm planning on. I have a common deck for, for, with friends. So I'm going to go ahead and put this over here with the other ones. A little reminder spot that I want to use that card in something. <clears throat> so, oh, and there we go. <clears throat> I don't like these little lips in the back. Um, I don't know why he didn't cut all the way through it. Anyway, um, another one of these. And... I'm going to move the camera a little bit. <clears throat> Alright, we got a full body art right here. You guys can see something a little bit shiny coming out of the side. And let's go ahead and look at that. So it's just a common card. Target opponent discards two cards. Uh, then it mills a card. Then it loses a life. And we gain one life. So hurt them several times. We feel better. <clears throat> Alright, here's the rare. Um, it has flying. Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. Non-basic lands your opponents control. Enter the battlefield tapped. Hmm. So this I have not. I did not receive this rare last time. So that's really good. And I do like the ability. Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. Uh, because again, I play with like sometimes six guys, a free for all. And I find them very annoying if they can cast more than one spell. Uh, although that spell does affect me too, so. Um, Alright. Beast, Trample. So, actually, I might put a whole bunch of those in one deck. Just because sometimes I like to just make my decks not powerful. But just something you can play with. And it's fun. And it makes the... Yeah. So, it will allow them not to do more. Do a whole bunch of things they want to do. And I'm all for that. <clears throat> all right, there are my uncommons. Let's go ahead and go through this pretty quickly. Because um, they're all commons and we know we've seen them. And let's get to this next pack. <clears throat> all right, what we got here? All right, so this is another uh, token that's a copy of any copied spell. So I'll probably use those a lot because... I like copying spells, especially when they're good spells. Another nice forest here. And again, I, I, I'm i guessing he's going to give me a lot of my the shinies. I just, yeah, I'll put them over here with the shinies. It's just a common. But here's my legendary creature. I already have two of these. This is my third. So um, guessing it was uh, not as rare as others. Um, okay, so here is a uncommon. We've seen these all over here. So we're going to put them over there. And I'll later organize the uncommons. <clears throat> and we'll just go ahead and put this down here. Oh, another Cheetor. So I'll put that up there. And I must say having these really adds to opening up any kind of box. Uh, whether it's a repack or not. Alright. Okay, so another one of these, of course. I'm not thinking that they're... Okay, here's my Mythic Rare. Ooh, and I did not have this one. I like that. This is actually another one, uh, one, another one of the ones of cards I saw in the set that I wanted to get. So I'm really glad I got the box. So it's a legendary creature, human warrior. This bell costs one less a cast for each person in your party. And again, that's the, um, what is it? The rogue, cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard. 
So, um, see here. You spin this, look at the top six card of six cards of your library. You may reveal the top two cards, uh, may reveal up to two cleric, rogues, warriors, and wizards, or ally. There you go. So, this is adding the ally, ally cards from among them. Oh, I can use I can turn this into an ally deck. Um, uh, so, I have an ally card that has all five colors. This only has oh, it only has. Uh, four colors here. The fifth is there. So yeah, it's fine. Uh, it does all colors. So again, that that's going to add a lot. Um, see here, among them put them, so again you put them in your hand and you put the rest at the bottom of your library so your library doesn't shrink. So mythic rare, we're going to put that up here with the right over here with this mythic rare. All right, so we have our uncommons here. This one has malice. Uh, whenever you cast life, uh, gain life, get a, uh, this creature gets a 1-1, one, one. and I don't think we've, s oh no, yeah, we've seen this one, okay, alright, let's go ahead and go through this really quickly, so we're not wasting time, we don't need to see everything anymore, and there we go, alright, so that was one mythic rare that I received, um, I expect to get at least two, uh, that's what it said. And if I don't, you're a witness. But this might uh, encourage some of you to, you know, uh, get a reopened box. And you can get some pretty good stuff. So, uh, land. And, okay, here is a legendary creature from my rare. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I did not receive this one yet. So I'm just kind of glancing at them, the colors. And yeah, so I have not seen this yet. It's a Hydra. I began a lot of Hydras uh, recently, and so I'm considering actually a Hydra deck. Um, <clears throat> and see, when this creature enters the battlefield with three... Uh, this creature enters the battlefield with three 1-1 one -one counters on it. Whenever another creature you control dies, if it had a 1-1 one -one counter on it, put a 1-1 one -one counter on this creature... Um, when this creature dies, create an XX black and green Hydra creature token where X is the number of counters on this creature. Uh, I know I had a, another one that was like this, so I'm curious if it's just one with a different art. But, we're going to throw that over here. Again, I like getting my legendary creatures. Gives me many options to throw at people. So I'll put all my uncommons right over here, and then I'm just going to go through this pretty quickly. <clears throat> um, death touch, and that stupid ops. I, well, it's landfall, but I, yeah. So some some cards are just like, oh man, I'm tired of seeing that card. You all know what I'm talking about. Here's a nice little uh, land right there. And this is going to be a pretty cool draw, hopefully, because I'm getting a shi uh, f shiny here, which is an uncommon target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. So uncommon ability, but we'll put it over here in the shinies. And here's my rare um, snake. Uh, can't be blocked. So I was pretty excited to get this card last time as well. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and just put this over here in the rare section and. See here, look at my uncommons. Uh, this uncommon, look at the top X cards of your library where X is three plus the number of, okay, so yeah, we've seen this one. Let's go ahead and put these out here pretty quickly. A couple defender, defenders, um, and <clears throat> let's go ahead and move on. All right, here's a nice land. Put that in the land. Here's the rare. We've seen that as well. Um, but we'll go ahead and just put that over here. Uncommon, uncommon. So I got a nice new art here, right there. So um, this is the mouse that we saw last uh, last night that I opened up. So uh, it's not as cute like I called it, but new art. I like it. Uh, so I'll put that up there. 
And this was an artifact. I really liked it, but we're not going to go through that again. Um, let's go ahead and just go through this. Again, we're looking for at least one more other mythic rare. I got another cat beast art. So again, you're getting <clears throat> the same thing as before, but he's going to take out the cards that he's looking for. And again, <clears throat> every single time I've opened up a repack box, it's not, you know, I haven't pulled bad stuff, and so, um, but don't expect the really good expensive cards to be there. Um, Alright, we got this here. I got another one of this, second one of the, re of the repacks, so we'll put that in the rares. Uh, uncommon, 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 we've seen all these, I'll throw these right there, and just go through this pack pretty quickly. Alright. Let's grab some more of these out here. So again, you can get some good stuff. Um, so I do recommend you get at least one box if you want to play, and then a repacked one. And that'll, that'll kind of strengthen everything else uh, from the set, basically. Um, uh, but of course, if you want, if you're looking for Pacific cards, get as many boxes as you want. All right, there's my land. Here is a legendary commander. <coughs> um, if you want the different commanders, you can buy them singly, or you can buy this. Um, see here, and I'm pretty sure I don't have this one. I'm just like rechecking real quickly, and yeah, I'm not seeing the uh, color or the letter at the front. So this is an uh, angel wizard. Um, I have a feeling that I was interested in this as, as well, but um, it's flying. <clears throat> it costs three to put out. <clears throat> Excuse me. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, choose target non-land permanent op opponent controls until your until your next turn. It can't attack or block, and its activate ability can't be activated. Sacrifice this creature. Choose hexproof or indestructible creatures you control gain that ability until the end of the turn so again if it's your legend if it's your commander <clears throat> you can sacrifice it but again you have to pay two each time to bring it out but uh, uh, every turn this is a control aspect so every turn you're controlling somebody's um character and in a party of six people that I play with, this could be helpful because A, people will not want to kill you <clears throat> because you're controlling somebody else's character. Of course, they're not, going to be the one, they're not going to want you to control, but this is going to make it so you primarily have one person wanting you dead because you're doing something to them. So it's good for both single and um, many player uh, uh, games. So I really like this one as well. Again, another reason why I'm glad I got this box. <clears throat> um, so yeah, we've seen this uncommon. We've seen this one. Let's go through this really quickly and get to our next pack. Alright, we're going there. And over here... <clears throat> um, again, I really recommend cutting through the entire pack. Um... I mean, this just flops over. So I got another illusion for my uh, token. <clears throat> oh, and you get the more illusions, and like in this case, you're getting a lot of extra um, uh, colored art. Um, so that's good. All right, here's my rare. All right, so I already had gotten this in this pack, the um, Hydra. So we're going to go and skip by this. Um, nope, Cotton Commons. Uh, uncommon, yeah, and I received all those uncommon, so this pack went pretty quickly. Uh, cleric, oh, crap. Alright, so I've already seen this art as well, but I just want to point out that I did receive another art in this one. It is a defender, and if you guys remember, I'm making a defender deck. I will probably do something again with landfall. So, alright, um... Uh, I have never done 
any repacks and set them on eBay. But again, I do encourage them people to buy from them if you haven't already. You will get good cards. You won't get, again get the best cards, but you'll get cool sh cool shit. Uh, no land, and then so this is the the holographic uh, of this equipment uh, salvaged blade. Um, I know I have that card. I probably have at least two of those cards. Uh, but it's holographic, and so it also ups your chance to get the holographic cards. So I have a legendary creature here. Um, I suspect by now I've already received this one, and I have. Yep, I've already received this creature. So I'm just going to place this over here with the other one. Um, put that over there, and then we'll go through our uncommons, which I've seen already. Uh, so again, my uncommon stack over here that you can see is getting larger. Uh, and we put a lot of those in our decks as well, not just the rares. So, um, Alright, we'll go through this. And by now I'm recognizing the cards pretty well. Alright, another one of these that's easy to recognize. Now the land, and here is my rare. Um, so I received this rare um, already, I know. Let's see here. Um, so I'm going to look at two cards. All right. So I did receive this rare, so I think it's in my rare pile, but um, you put two one one counters, so you pay four, put two one one counters. Uh, on this, then uh, on this land, then you may have it become a zero zero elemental creature until the end of turn. End of turn is still a land. So, uh, if you're gonna make a land deck and your lands are indestructible, that's where you want to go. I'll put over that over the rares and common, uncommon, uncommon. Seen them both, and let's go ahead and go through this pretty quickly. Um, I'm still looking for that really good art, hoping to get more of them. Alright, um, so here is my uh, token, my land, it's swamp, and ooh, another mythic rare. So, uh, this is my second mythic rare, it is a legendary vampire uh, cleric. And I don't think I've seen this one, um, which is good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so let's go ahead and read it here. Flying. When this creature attacks, defender player chooses a non-legendary creature card in your graveyard. You return that card to the battlefield with a 1-1 one -one counter on it. The creature is a vampire in addition to another. So it does sound familiar, but uh, this is really a kick-ass card because not only are you attacking, not only do you get a creature back, but your opponent gets to choose a creature, um, which could be their suffering, and you know how I feel about that. Uh, suffering is good. Uh, all right, sorcery. Uh, we've seen that. Again, we've seen that. and we. Okay, so again... Yesterday, this is just a copy of a previous uh, spell about 10 years ago. I don't know if they made many bef between that, but it just exiles a creature. But it's cheaper if you have your rogue, cleric, warrior, and wizard. It can only cost one. And the other one, I'm pretty sure, costs... Uh, well, I'm thinking of one that costs four. Now I'm thinking of one that costs two. So I, I'll have to look at that card again. But I highly recommend, if you're watching this... Um, uh, Journey to Oblivion. Um, it's another Journey card. That's all I remember offhand. So, all right, I'm gonna put that over here. The there in Commons, uh, useless card. Let's put that up there. Go through this quickly. Um, uh, let's see here. Open up a new pack here. Oh, I can't really use the phrase "open up." It's already open. Uh, all right, we got here a uh, insect token. Put that over here. Here's our new land, and here is another legendary creature which offhand I do not recognize. 
So I'm going to go through my legendaries here. Um, and see... Yeah, I'm not recognizing it. And no, this is a new card as well. So again, I'm getting new cards I didn't get from the the, uh, the previous uh, box. So that's really good. And it cost me like a third less. Um... It was like in the $30 range for this box. So, okay, uh, it's a cleric. It has lifelink. When this creature or another cleric you control dies, return target cleric card with less converted mana cost from the ba graveyard to the battlefield. Oh! So, I have a cleric deck that is not, I have not played yet. It is white-black. This may be its new commander. Because every single time the creature dies, he come, they come back. So I will definitely... I'm going to put this in a unique spot um, up here. Because I really want to play that one. I haven't had the opportunity yet. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Okay, so another thing I did get... I got this in common. We've already seen it. It just adds land. It's an elemental. Uh, so green land, I'm going to put over here. I got three of those last time. Now I got, uh, sorry, two of them last time. Now I have three. So, um, good one to have. Vampire Cleric. Um, uh, into the battlefield under your control. You gain one life. See here, whenever you gain one life, uh, for the first time each turn, put one on, one, one on count on this. I think I've seen that one, but I wasn't that sure. Merfolk. Um, yeah, I think we've seen that. Um, oh, I've seen a lot more folks. So, all right, let's go ahead and do this real quickly because again, this box we're primarily trying to look and focus on the rares and the mythic rares and trying to find search for the mythic rares. But you know, if you see something cool, take a moment with it. All right, all right. Ah, oh, good land. Here's my rare. I'm pretty sure I haven't seen this one. I would remember it. I don't normally play red, but um, see here, cowards. I had to make sure I read that right. Cowards can't block warriors. So I've never seen the phrase cowards on a card before. So that's interesting. But, I'll be honest, I'm guessing that's a mal uh, no, that's not Malice. I haven't played with Malice cards yet, but this is really just, I'm going to have to, uh, okay, so I'm going to read the card, maybe that'll tell you what it is, and I noticed the cowards uh, appear in the card, so, um, so I'm gonna, so, yeah, yeah, so, again, sometimes you get stuck, uh, like, okay, what am I doing? So again, pay one, choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. Okay, so I can choose each one of these. Um, once a turn. So this creature gets a 1-1 one, one until the end of the turn. This creature, sorry, target creature becomes a coward until the end of the turn. Um, target warrior gains trample until the end of the turn. So it's only until the end of the turn, but that's where the coward thing is. And I must admit, cowards in real life, uh, along with politically correct morons, um, annoy the shit on me because they're cowards and that's probably why so anyway moving on um see here each opponent loses four life you gain four life but it costs six so we did see this last time and towards the beginning of the unpack and uh it's expensive um uh but it's yeah there's another card like that 10 years ago it's three life and not four life so uh, elemental, we've seen that, and <clears throat> we've seen this as well. So let's go ahead and just go through the rest of this pretty quickly. Um, yeah. And sometimes I think I could say something, uh, but I won't. And then this is another beast. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, copy this creature. Oh, sorry. Uh, under your control, this creature gets plus two, plus two until the end of, uh, until end of the turn. Um, so just a common card, but I don't think I've actually seen that picture, but yeah, for that art, I should say. All right, good. I got another token that's copy. I do like this. I intend to use them. Um, another red land. I don't think I've seen this mountain yet. 
All right, here is my legendary creature. It is just blue, so I don't think I've seen this one yet. Um, all of my other legendaries are all multicolored. So let's read through this one. It is, oh, a Leviathan Crab. Uh, oh, oh, okay, so this looks really cool. And I do have a Levi like a Leviathan uh, deck. Um, I can't make this the commander, I don't think. Um, I... Yeah, I can't make this to the commander, but let's go ahead and go through this. All right, uh, spells your opponent control, uh, spells your opponent's cast that target this creature, uh, cost two more to cast, um, pay three, and this creature gets plus X minus X until the end of the turn, where X is the number of islands you control. So that is pr uh, pretty powerful, especially if you have a lot of islands. And please, please note, he has 17 toughness. Um, I've seen something with 2020 before. Uh, it's actually an aura, but that's a pretty interesting ability. So I'm going to put this. Um, uh, I want to uh, because I have already decked that I want to look at that. I'm going to put it up there. All right. So um, see here, uncommon, uncommon, gobby, uncommon. We've seen all those. So let's go ahead and go through here. Where are all those foils and all those... Um, well, okay, here's another art. But we've seen this one. It's the Elemental Dog. So it's good to have more of those. They're not... I mean, it's like a step above them. Common. Alright. <clears throat> so we're uh, about two-thirds through. Uh, here is my ca uh, token. Uh, cat Beast. We'll put that over there. And my full land uh, island there, and I got a holographic shiny here or foil, and I think I've gotten this as a foil already, but we'll put it over there. And here is my uh, rare. I received this one as well, so it's just a land card. We're gonna put this over here in the rare pile. Uh, uncommon, uncommon, and uncommon. I've seen all these. Let's go funny I'll put more focus on the um, new art than I will on the uh, uncommons I've already seen before all right um, so we are ha over halfway done I think got one more stack here so we're gonna go through this pretty quickly uh, let's see here put that up there Another uh, full art there, and then we have this rare. See here, this spell costs one last cast for each creature in your party. So we've seen this before. Um, at least that opening ability, uh, uncommon, uncommon. Oh, got another journey. That's good to get. And then a merfolk, merfolk rogue. I'm just gonna put those over there right now. Um, again, I highly re recommend you buying stuff. I'm not, I've never put any of these out myself. Uh, I've just got back into cards. Again, I have a lot of free time. Um, I am enjoying this though. And I think there's a real purpose to getting cards that are repacked. Um, another one of these. Uh, forest. I don't recognize seeing this forest. It's wrapped around a tree, wrapped around a pillar. So. Um, here's a rare. At the beginning of of combat on your turn, put a one one counter on target creature you you, you can you control. Yeah, I might need water. All right, so that's a rare. That's pretty good. Um, uncommon vampire, elf, and instant. Yeah, I recognize that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, so, uh, I am doing stuff with Star Trek and going to probably send out some, un, uh, so Star Trek CCG, some repacks. Um, I know I'm making decks for people because I was very unhappy with how the, um, uh, the, the draws I did, but also the, the, uh, the starter packs, you're supposed to be able to play them out of the box. You can't do that with the Star Trek CCG. The first ones were unplayable. The second ones were probably not any better than that. And if you look at the cost on eBay, hell no. So, 
Um, I was not, uh, I, so I'm making my own to put up there. That will be playable. All right, there's my land. Um, here is my rare. We have seen this guy before, so we're just going to go past this. My uncommons, same thing. Uh, Merfolk Rogue, just saw that one. All right, let's go through this quickly. Um, but again, if you're a Star Trek fan like I am, uh, you see the cards, you play them as a, you saw them as a kid. I couldn't play the game; it was too tough. Uh, and uh, I, I, Magic was the first card game I think I actually played through, and I learned how to play. It, and I love Magic, but I remember just opening a common card game that you was this Galaxy, and like, oh, this is so cool. Brought me back to uh, uh, getting seeing again the original series, the uh, Star Trek. Uh, and count at far point, far point when the ships ship separate. I love that. So my land. So I got a uh, foil shiny here. I'll put that up there. This is a common one. Here's my rare. Again, this is my second one in this pack. So I have three of these. So I'm just going to throw this over here real quickly. Um, so that's my third. I want to throw that at the bottom. I don't want to mess them up. So, Minotaur, Human Warrior, um, those are my uncommons. Yeah, I saw that one too. And so it is going faster. Uh, be careful not to knock over my uh, piles here. By this time, last one, I had already stacked these on there. Um, so we're down to, I think, like six more packs after this one. Got another one of those. Another mountain. Uh, here's my rare. I don't recognize this one. Um, so it's Sphinx Wizard. Uh, it has flying. When this creature enters the battlefield, draw two cards, then discard one card. Uh, so not bad if you flash, I guess. Um, whenever you cast an instance or sorcery spell, you may have this creature's base power and toughness become... Uh, Four one or one four until the end of the turn. So basically, you can switch it back and forth. Um, eh, um, not too great. Um, uh, see, wait. Oh, well, okay. Let's look at this again. Um, okay. So okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's. This is a uh, useful. You can actually have it attack, and. If it makes it through, you cast an instant. So if you're playing this with green, um, you can, you know, charge it up with, like, a giant strength, give it a plus three, plus three, or something like that, and then switch it around so it gets a, it takes another three damage uh, as it hits. So, oh, yeah, it can, it can be useful depending on what you do it for. So, um, uncommon, uncommon, uncommon. We've seen, we've seen those. Let's get through this. Um, I'm getting pretty dry, so I'm going to grab just a little bit of water here. I've been through mini packs. Ah, that's better. After this, I have to go outside and continue building my wall outside. Uh, it is a retaining wall, and it's one of three I'm going to have to build. One of two I'm building now, so. All right, we got that. And a nice uh, land there. And then a goblin. I haven't seen this one yet, neither. Um, haste, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player creates a 0-1 token goblin. Wait, that player creates a 0-1 goblin token goblin construct artifact creature token. Okay, I'll read this out loud, sorry. Sometimes I start thinking in my mind. Um, so whenever... This creature deals combat damage to a player. That player creates a 0-1 colorless goblin construct artifact creature token with this creature can't block. And at the beginning of your upkeep, this creature does one damage to you. Okay, I'm alright with giving people creatures if it deals them damage. Uh, and that's whenever I... Uh, Whenever I do, okay. So this dealing and giving abilities that give it unblock, make it unblockable, 
definitely one you want to do. So you're giving them more damage. Um, each time you damage them, oh, with this, and you, so you're using a creature to make this creature unblockable, and you're damaging them, but also giving them creatures which they want to get rid of because they're damaging them them every turn. So I like that. I am going to put this up here with these legendary creatures so I can remind myself to look at it. I got another one of these tap for land. Um, so I have four of those now, which is good. Um, so Relic Axe I know I've received. And uh, this is another one of those. I want to put this in a different spot. So Human Warriors get plus one, plus one. So it's, again, doing Commander. You can only have one of these in your deck. I'm getting my friends together. One of them, my plans is to say, let's go to traditional style playing when you have four and one. So I'm going to plan to make a warrior deck with that as well. So hopefully I'll get five of these is my goal. Um, so I'm going to put this up here with these cards. And let's go through this pretty quickly and not die, knock down my common stack. All right. I told my mom once these cards are worth more than she was. <clears throat> come on, you guys agree with me on that. Come on, I love my mom, but come on, these are magic cards. <clears throat> All right, of course, my roommate upstairs would say this is why I'm not married and I'm single, but I would say it's because I can count every girl I've asked out on one hand. All right, so legendary creature, serpent. I have, I don't think I've seen this, but I think I might, well, I might be wrong. Let's see here. No, it's a green with a V. So I'm just kind of going through it, and I'm not. S oh no, I have. S I have. S you have seen this one, so I opened this for my pack yet last time. So I'm just going to go through this, put that with that, and then add my uncommons through here, and go through the common sec because we're getting down to a time. And so I'm not seeing any more, not as many holographic as I was, so I'm wondering what can happen to those. Um, so I know one of those things. I'm kind of wondering what, I mean, I, I can see why people don't want to keep them. I'm, again, intrigued on what they do. I meant to look it up, but again, my bed was looking really, really, really good to me last night. All right, so I am getting to destroy all non-land permanents. Um, again, great if you're doing a land deck um and it, it's been played on me enough that i should annoy other people with it so ex especially a guy by the name of estrus all right here is my uncommon it is a uh land i'm i've received this one before as well i've received this and i've received this let's go ahead and move through it so again i we've there's at least two un, uh, mythic rares in here. I think I've received them both. I'm hoping, beyond hope, that there'll be one more in here. Okay. So that's new art. We have seen this, but I do do want to show it to you. Uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, this creature gains indestructible until the end of the turn. And it is a 5-4. So put that up there. That at least makes me feel... I mean, I like the new art. I mean, those are really cool cards. And at some point, if they continue with this, and uh, I don't know how many, uh, what was it, um, cards, uh, what was it, sets they've been doing that, or how long they've been doing it, but I just recently noticed it, because I've just recently started opening up packs. So, here's my land, uh, and then there is a foil, or as I call them, a shiny. So, we'll go ahead and put that over here. We won't read it, but uh, this is a legendary commander. Let's see here. It's a red green. I'm pretty sure this one I have. Um, P and yep, there it is. So we're gonna throw this one over here. You guys gotta see it. I'm pretty sure you don't need me reading it to you. All right, another uh, relic axe. Put those over there. Go through the uncommons. Let's see if we get something at least nice in there. And the answer is no. We're down to two packs. I really don't like how the person does that. Seriously, if you're going to repack something, use your. In fact, if you're going to unpack something, you should and open it. You should cut it. 
It's the best way to get the cars out safely. All right, got another one of these, of course. Another forest land. My mythic rare is going to be one we already got at the beginning of your upkeep. Uh, put a 1-1 one, one on target creature you, you, you control, so that's good. Um, and then these are my uncommons. We've seen them. Let's hope we get another art. And there's a bird. There, there we go. There we go. There we go. Ah, uh, come on. At least give me one more art. I found that the ones I opened before had more art in it. Like, first couple in this. Um, Alright, this is the last pack. So, let's go put that over here. There is another... Ah, uh, land. So, I am getting an uncommon... Uh, thundering Rebuke. So again, that's a almost a to me a common card, but it is considered uncommon. Uh, does four damage to creature or planeswalker. So we're gonna put that over here. Here is my rare, and I have received this one and this one. This is the one that I was really excited about for my cleric deck. It might replace my commander. So I'm gonna put this with the other one. Um, up there so uh creatures see here we've seen this seen this um we have seen that artifact as well so we're almost done here let's hope i get something and it looks like it's not going to happen so we are done thank you for uh being with me we do this and i will catch you on the next video all right later hello everyone all right so um, I have just unpacked a, and opened a box of Xanarkar Rising and then unpacked a repacked box of Xanarkar Rising and I thought about doing another video. <clears throat> um, the first thing that was on the list of things to do, and apparently I didn't put them up, oh, there they are, is that Xanarkar came out with these cards right here. And I'm like, what the heck are they? What are they doing? And there are some things I recognize as well. And this card here um, <clears throat> has this little symbol, and I'm like, what the heck is that for? Well, it's interesting if you turn it over, there's your answer. <laughs> a, flip, a simple switch of a card. So, okay, um, I'm going to get to this in, in a second, to this card. We'll put, put this down. So, <clears throat> a while ago, they printed these cards where... Um, they listed that this card could be any one of those cards and because when you're playing in tournaments you know you you have them, your cards sleeved and you don't want them not have them sleeved because the, your opponents can see what's on the black back of your card so <clears throat> you also don't want to take them out of the sleeve and put them back in the sleeve because that's going to damage the card so you have to find a way around that so the see-through sleeves that you can use you can see both sides but you now had they put these cards in here, so you can mark Journey to Eternity, Eternity. That's that card, and then you can pull that card out. You can put this in your deck. You sleeve this card, and then when this card comes out, you cast a spell. You replace this with this over here with an opaque, uh, see-through sleeve. So you can just flip it over it, over it, and you don't have to re-sleeve it every single time. So these cards here are a cheaper version of this. These cards, you don't just X something, you, you basically have to write in yourself, and in the long run, it's gonna be a little bit sloppy. I think they were kinda of planning on this. I think this card is cheaper to make than this card, and that's why they've gone to this. It's just theory, no evidence to support it. Um, but uh, I kinda of like this one better. Um, but, you know, with this, my idea is, okay, can I put this in a printer, print up a card to do this with? I'd like to, and then I would do is print up. My, my thought is to print up this image or this picture, uh, put the information, the text up here, and the image here, and then what it does, have that in my deck, and then have this available so I can flip it over in a see-through sleeve. So... Um, that answers my question of what it was for. Um, I do have plenty of these because I opened up a, uh, what was it? Um, uh, uh, an unopened box and then a repacked box. So, um, I don't know, uh, definitely I'm going to use cards. I'm going to have to use this, but I, I want to make sure 
I can reuse them. That's that's a thing. And so I don't want it to be sloppy. And, you know, so I want to find some cool way of putting an image on there. And it definitely making it somewhat look like this because here you have the mana cost for everything. You don't doesn't tell you what the spell is for. But if you have any kind of like a side deck or hidden deck um, ready to go, you'll know what it does because it's going to be over there. Um, so I want to find some way of getting a picture of this card printing that image on here and the information so I can have that and it looks good. Um, and probably keep extras of these just in case I wanted to, I don't know, I'll have to go through the deck and see how many, I'm oh, sorry, go through this set of Zenica Rising and see how many are there. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is after you open it, I know many people have their different ways they probably open up packs and things they do. Um, me, I'm going to kind of just separate things um, and I'm going to clean up my workspace and the idea is to organize it and uh, I use a program called Magic Workstation which apparently is an, uh, I'm having to put in all of my stuff and so I'm kind of looking for a new one <clears throat> but I have this thing about paying for, for crap that I shouldn't pay for and I don't really want to do that. So. I'm going to take these lands, which I don't, I'm not documenting it with my lands anymore, unless they're unique lands. Uh, and I'm just going to put them with the other lands I have over here. I'm going to stack these first on my tokens over here, so they're kind of out of the way. Then I'm going to stack my lands from, um, what was this? This is, uh, Spo uh um, from another set. Uh, I can't think of it offhand. I'm going to stack it there, and I'm going to take these new tokens, I'm going to stack them out of the way. So, again, I'm making space. I uh, don't need this anymore. I'm going to put this back here. Um, because I need to find a way of organizing my stuff. So, I'm going to get the unique stuff that I, I box differently. Uh, and I'm going to put them in different areas. So, again, here are all my legendary commanders that I received. And I'm going to put them over here. And it's not all of them. Because I also received these legendary commanders see here these as well i want these to be in a special location and this card as well so i'm going to put that i'm going to put this tuck this card over here and i'm going to put it over here on the side next to these cards up there they're facing me so i know i haven't actually dealt with them um so these are my cards here that are just there's no text on nothing special to them they may have more power and toughness but I'm going to make those ready because they're the first ones I'm going to deal with. These ones are the ones that produce extra mana. I'm going to put them up here because I'm going to want to deal with this. These are the junk cards. Just get rid of them as well. Uh, they're just advertisement cards. Free to play. Um, I'm going to get them out of my workspace. So the idea is to organize everything. Uh, there's a reason why my friends call me the librarian, and I've earned that nickname, is because I organize everything. I have it documented, like all the videos I have, all the movies. And I do that because, uh, I started doing that because, quite frankly, I got sick and tired of buying the same movie over and over and over again, realizing, oh, now I have three copies of this. Like, I have three copies of the movie Daylight on VHS. Yes, I still have VHS. Yes, I still have a lot of VHS. I have three copies of the movie as good as it gets. Primarily because that movie, actually, I might have a fourth on DVD. But that movie is awesome. It has my world famous line, which I will not share in this video, but I'll let you think about it. I'll probably share it later. Um, so I still need to clean this up. I'm going to take all my rares that I've done, I've gotten. I'm going to put them up here because, again, I have to clean up my workspace and I want to keep things organized. So I can do do that. These are all my new art, so I'll put them up here right next to my rares. Um, clean this up here. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll get to get to work, get to work on organization and getting things to where okay now I can do stuff. So again, the first step I feel is just organizing things. Um, getting them where they belong, moving them out of the way. So here are all my whites. I'm gonna stack that right there. And these are all just the common cards, not the uncommon or the rares. Um, so opening up two boxes, one of which was repacked, this is what I got. This is what I get to add to my other cards. And I 
keep my cards in my storage. I keep them under this order. Um, creatures, <coughs> instances, sorceries, and then enchantments. I used to keep enchantment or orders as its own thing in between instances and sorceries, but I decided to change that very recently because of a particular commander that I'm using, again, to annoy my friends. Um, and I can draw out any enchantment. I realize, you know, they're just kind of the same thing, and then they're making these enchantment curses, so I might as well put them all into one category. So, oh, let's grab these black cards. All right, and then here are our artifacts. And finally, let's see here, let's go ahead and move this over here because the table kind of sinks in the middle, so I put the larger stacks of stuff. These are on common cards. Um, and it's astounding going through that. All I had to do was flip it over, but I'm so focused on the one side of things. And this is, this is I think, part of the getting more land, the land focus on this, the land fall, and all that kind of stuff. So now I have the table kind of under control. Um, and then I have some of my newer, cooler stuff up here as well. But I want to start making space. So I'm going to take, again, these are the cards here that have no special ability. They're tough. I, I theorize that their toughness and their power are a little bit more. They more, and that's why they still exist. But if I ever want to grab them, I can do that. Uh, and so I keep them separately. And then all I'm going to do is organize these by color. Looks like there's nothing in the blue category. Uh, oh, black. And so basically, or red category, uh, now that I think about it. Um, unless I'm missing it. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just toss these. These are the ones from I got from another set. I still haven't programmed these. So I'm just going to throw them up here to program into my library, my digital library, at some point. So uh, that's out of the way right now. And what do I want to go through next? Um, this same thing. So again, I just kind of want to go through each and every one of these. And this is, in this, it's great because when I do this and I program them, I can program them in and I could just type, I actually literally type out all the information on the card, the name, and then I keep it in two, two places in this program. And so it's really good to have these organized beforehand and then I do them by mana cost. So as I said before, I program, uh, sorry, I keep my library in the order of creature, instant, sorcery, and then enchantments. For artifacts, it's artifact creature, it's artifact equipment, and then it's just plain artifacts. And so I'm going to put them in this order. Um, and then I'm also going to put them in the order of mana cost, which is why I grab the artifacts first. Um, because they are a lot more simpler. So you just kind of walk through and explain. But, I mean, this is a way of keeping your... Magic cards under control. I don't know if somebody has a better idea than I do, uh, but there is a reason why my friends call me the librarian. I've said that before. I'll say it again. It's because I keep everything. I know everything I have. So I thought I had more of these. Okay, so this was an uncommon card that made it into the uh, common stuff. So I'm going to take this, put this with the uncommon cards. And then, so we have an artifact equipment that cost one. Another artifact equipment that cost red uh, red plus one, and then another one plus one gains flying. So I'm going to kind of put these based upon cost over here. And then we have creatures. This costs three, this costs two, and this is an, just a plain old artifact. So um, I'm going to stack this based upon artifact, artifact creature, artifact equipment, and then just plain our old artifacts. So this is all stacked, ready to program, because I, I, I want to spend as little time changing information in the card when I program it. There are some car, uh, so there are some cards, so, all right, let me pause for a second. So that was a small stack. This is going to be a larger, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a two-step. Instants go here, creatures are going to go here, and I'm going to put a lot of creatures. Sorceries over here as I go through it. 
Um, and then any enchantments will go over here, and then I'll we'll go over here, and then I will organize each stack by itself, and then I'll stack it. Um, but you want to, when programming them into a uh, database, you don't want to spend all your time changing as all this information. Um, you want to do that as little as possible, so you have to find a way around that. Um, I wish this other guy who made the program, uh, again, all of his uh, sites were taken down, it looks like. So I think since when COVID, this happened, when COVID happened, and I hadn't updated my uh, card list because... Uh, or update the program because I wasn't actually buying cards anymore. Um, but uh, now that I am, and so I'm having to program all these cards in there myself because I don't know if he'll come back. Uh, I don't know how much of this digital age it, which this COVID has pushed us into will remain. I think it's going to remain big time. So here's another uh, card over here. I need to put this back up here. I'll put it that way so I realize I need to put that in the mix but um, there there are some programs out there and I want to talk about this where you can literally use your camera phone and you can scan the thing and there was one I ran into um, it scans really well but you have to pay for it I'm like I just don't want to pay so you can do the first hundred cards uh, 100 types of cards but then they want you to pay I have a thing about okay you know you want me to pay for just programming my library and using your cards. Um, I don't want to do that. I'd rather just sit there and type them in. Plus, it helps put them into my memory, which is the other thing, too. So I can go and find something, and then you're getting a whole new stack of new cards. You want to be able to find them again. So there is a process to that. Um, also, the uh, there's another program I found online that is a, a picture one. Much, I mean, I can't say it's much better. I was really happy about it when I found it, but I sit there, I'm trying to like use my phone. I am getting like, uh, I have access to set uh, set equipment and all that kind of stuff. So I'm using perfect lighting and I can't get it to take the picture. And I have a new iPhone. So I thought the programming sucked. I put that up on YouTube that I didn't like it and he, I did get a response right, right away. And I said, well, you know what? I, I just typed out, this is what I went through. This is what I'm going. I would not recommend buying this uh this app. Um, yeah, and, and I feel bad in some aspects of that just because I'm pretty sure the individual trying to sell it is doing the best he possibly can. He just needs to work on that and that really sucks because you have these big expensive companies uh, and they can put all this money in it and, gra and grab all people there to do things in there. Uh, and all these people put money into their program, and they make their money back quicker. So um, that's the thing about big business. Uh, another one of these, I think at the end I was just going through as quickly as I can, and I'm talking to you guys. Um, it's a creature sorcery. I didn't get many enchantments, I noticed, in these sets. Um, but I'm um, looking again all the landfall abilities. Um, I, I Again, I, I'm... Waiting until I bought in all the cards I intend to buy in packs before programming them because I'd rather go through everything once, count how many I have, and then just put them in my library. Um, by library, again, I mean my collection library. Um, and I know I have, oh, I can't remember, I, I want to say I have at least 12,000 cards in there. It might be more. Um, I'm just, again, I want on memory. I'll be putting some still shots of everything, but I mean, you want to know how to find stuff. And part of the reason why I'm doing this video is uh, I have a friend named Jerry. I like Jerry. Uh, my nickname for him used to be Tinkerbell until he asked me to stop calling him that. Um, Jerry doesn't play Magic, so he'll probably never watch this video. He will watch my Star Trek videos when I do that for the Star Trek CCG game. Um, because we are going to be doing instructive videos on how to play that game because as a kid... I was freaking confused on it. I collected all kinds of cards, Marvel, um, DC, Star Trek cards, and to me, I thought at first it was a collectible set. I didn't know you could play this game at first. Um, and so then I learned that I want to play it. I could never play it because I could never learn the rules. I never played Magic, and now I've been playing Magic for over 10 years. Uh, let me do a little math here. Yeah, over 10 years. And I still can't play that freaking game. Uh, Magic has helped, but... There is a learning curve, and that is the one of the things that I, I I think killed the game at one point. It's coming back, I think, a little bit, 
but killed the game because they built all these sets with all these rules, and they add on rules that, did, that conflicted with other rules, and they made it so complex it was difficult for people to want to play, especially if you were a new player. Um, Magic the Gathering is not like that. Okay, I mean, I am so grateful because I, I Magic the creators have done such an awesome game keeping these things, I mean, this game going. Um, that's a new one. So I'm kind of doing this by picture as I organize. But I am a huge Star Trek fan. And by Star Trek, I do not mean disgracery, toilet paper, or under decks. Or under drawers. There you go. Under drawers. That's my new nickname for that bullshit. As you can see, I get a little passionate about that crap. So these are actually two common cards that made, made, it, in, made it in here while I was talking, so I'll put it in the common section. But you'll notice that on the sorceries, I get a lot of the same ones. Um, it's more than I actually need of something, so I might share with some friends, but I like to keep at least four of everything. So if I'm playing something with four deck with four cards in it, like, uh, so if I'm playing tra traditional, you can have up to four cards in it. I want to keep four for that. I want to keep it extra for, in case I, I like that card, in case I have it in a common deck, uh, or sorry, in a commander deck, which you can only have one of each card in it. Um, and then I would like to have extra, but sometimes I feel like I need to go through my cards and, oh, we just need to get rid of stuff. So there are all the sorcery cards. Um, this is a creature card that I made it here, put it with creatures. Um, I'm just going to stack them in the order of cost. So this costs four, this costs three, this costs two, and this costs one. And that way when I put them in my library, I can start with the least expensive stuff and I can put the expensive stuff and I know kind of how many cards I'm doing. A friend of mine who also plays Magic asked me, um, in what order do I keep my cards? And, or do I draw my cards for building a deck? And, you know, I, I say I, for a commander, that depends on the deck, on the commander. Um, for, it depends on my purpose. So I need to start somewhere. It doesn't have to be with creatures. It doesn't have to be with instances or sorceries or uh, enchantments. It really depends on what my purpose is. So, uh, again, we're doing organization here. I will refer back to the Star Trek and just how... Like right now, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm in the, still in the process of learning how to create decks for that thing. Um, when Magic the Gathering was just so simple, um, and one of the problems I had, uh, and those of you that saw that I, I didn't record this, and this is actually why I started recording, is that when I would open up unopened packs, I got three of the exact same card, then another two of this card over here, and three of another card over here. And that just drove me up the wall. And so I started recording it as evidence to prove that. And that happened again a few times, but not as much as the first time. And I just I just feel like that's like, oh my gosh. Um, but that's a problem that the original, uh, that the Star Trek cards have, was uh, Decipher did not organize, uh, randomize, randomize them very well. So, um, yeah. And although I would recommend buying packs for um, Magic, I cannot recommend buying packs for Star Trek. I would recommend buying singles or sets that people are selling. I have bought the entire series, one card of every uh, card from First Contact, and that's what I have for First Contact. Plus a box of those costs a thousand bucks. Um, and I don't want to put that money into it. Plus, I get enough look from my parents, and yes, I live with my parents, but I take care of my father who has dementia, neuropathy, uh, spends most of his life kind of suffering right now, which is very sad, um, and I've had to develop tools to help him through his suffering, to help him live a normal life, which he's still not happy about because he used to be a very incredibly active man. And right now, those things do not help him stay pain-free. I distract him by watching movies. And, but he wishes, and he does, he wishes he understood that, I mean, he just doesn't want to live the way he is. But let's get off that right now. Um... As I organize this, I want to stay focused, talk about cards. Um, so I've actually wondered when he'll come down and actually 
interrupt me. Oh, this one's a common card. As I start noticing other ones adding up and that one isn't, I realize I have a common card there. So I look at it more closely. Um, so these, there's a lot of black creatures in this one. Um, it will, as I type them up in the computer, it will, tr my brain will be trying to, okay, what I can what I can use this for, and I'll probably take some of these out to prep them in other decks. Um, one of the things was I'm going to make a zombie deck, and this is flying, but it's, it's pretty expensive for the kicker. And I know there was a card in here that requires it to be kicked, um, but, I mean, it's a, a total cost is six. So, but it doesn't have to be kicked. If you put an enchantment on there, you put a, uh, what am I thinking about, um, an equipment card on there, you know, that'll raise it up pretty quickly. And, you know, if not everybody has flying, and it gives you lifelink, so, you know, it doesn't mean it's a worthless card. Um, that's snake. Okay, we're going ahead and we're, boom. So there are two snakes. So, so one's a worm, and a, a worm horror, and the other one's a snake. And so it's easy to get those cards kind of confused between each other in this series. Um, okay, another one of these, these cards up here, up there. And that happens. But again, you want to get as much organization because then you can find your cards. Problem is, is you didn't, after trying to build a deck or two decks, um, you then have to put all those cards back. And this is also why I keep more than a, a one card because it's easier to go in there like, okay, I can put this card back and this card back um, and things don't get lost. Um, and then it keeps order because I don't know how you guys are. I like to have order in my life. Uh, makes me feel like I'm not going crazy. And yet, there's a part of me that's always crazy. So, all right, so we're going to put this in cost order. This is pretty expensive. It costs six for that. We're going to go ahead and get this one. It's five for that. Um, kind of just glancing. This is a four cost. And then we have two cost, a two cost, and another two cost. And another two costs over here. So I'm not working really through everything. I'm going to explain something here in a second. A two cost, so it's a three cost, two cost, two cost, and a two cost. I might have said that wrong. So another thing that I might do later on as I go through here, if I get more, let's say, vampires, uh, clerks, and one thing is I program them, program them in my, in my uh, library if they're types the same thing i will put them next to each other even if their mana cost is different because at least by programming them that makes it easier to program because i'm not constantly having to change things um you'll notice that the unique arts that are over here like here's the worm right here a worm horror that i talked about it's a uh unique art and so I'm finding different ways of programming that in there um, of what I have and because they're doing that it's it's adding another level to how I have to program things so um, and again I really feel like order makes things easier got creatures all in here um, sorceries instant oh, that's an instant um, oh creature card Oh, let's see here. Um, for those of you who you have a lot of cards, I know at some point you get away. Some people have better organization than I do, uh, but they also have the space to do it in. And I'll be honest with you, I got a lot of crap. Um, and by crap, I mean good stuff. <laughs> Um, some could argue some of these commons are not so good. I'll give you that. Uh, but those are always not so good commons. Um, but I really uh, like keeping things in the order. Um, oh, that's what I was going to say. My friend Jerry, I was talking about him. He has all these Star Trek cards, and I was noticing how he has them just shoved into boxes. I'm sure there's some level of order in there, but I would never keep my cards in that thing, in that that level of disorder, I guess. And uh, I'm, I don't want my cards to be damaged. So um, he does keep care of his like rare cards, which is good. Um, but again, um, I even try to focus on the condition of my common cards. Um, let's be honest. I mean, how many times have you gone online and each one of these cards might cost a dollar? 
and they're common. Um, they're just older. Uh, I live in Beaverton, Oregon, and there's a game shop, Rainy Day Games, and they've been selling commons for a nickel a piece, and so I've been grabbing them because they cost at least a nick a quarter online, um, on average. So I've been grabbing up on a lot of those recently, and it really has increased my uh, deck as well. Gotta not start organizing this until I'm done. There are a lot of more creatures, I think, in this set. Um, so I may end up playing more red. Um, I kind of want to, even though red is my least favorite color. I'm pretty much pretty sure that everybody will say that blue is one of their top colors. Blue and black, uh, green would be the, like the in the middle thing. White and uh, red are probably their least favorite, is what I guess. Um, I do like white, but again. I eh, mix with other things, to be honest with you. So, all right, here we go. Oh, sorceries, focusing on talking, and I'm. This is taking me just a tad bit longer. Um. So I really, again, I've said this before. Your organization will help you through your decks, and then um, make a few decks, because you're going to have to put those cards back in organization. That's what some of this mess over here is. I'm having to reorganize things after making my decks. And I still haven't gotten to freaking play any of them. Um, I have a friend whose father who is deathly afraid of the coronavirus. Me, I will walk outside and I will not wear a mask anywhere I go unless I absolutely have to because I need to go into the grocery store to get food for my father. My, well, all of us. But my father, and this is only partially joking, um, he... Wants me to go out there, find the virus, to take home, and say hi to him. There's a part of him that actually wants to die. And I'm not joking about that. But he has chosen to live. And so, when you're living in pain, you can, or an individual lives in pain, in suffering, it is a very strong character that person has. So I can actually, as a son, say I can be pr f proud of my father because he chooses to live. Uh, he has made that choice himself. And, uh uncommon in there. So it looks like there's only about three or four sorceries, so that'll go pretty quick here. Um, so I hope I'm not boring you guys, my father, it's just on my mind. Um, so I am under the age of 40, and I have recently had a heart attack, uh, and I've heard from everybody how I'm too young to have a heart attack, and there's this wonderful woman I care about a lot she's five foot two she's amazing great heart but she's the biggest pain in the butt i can ever i've ever met and she is the reason behind the heart attack i won't get in details about that but um yeah uh <clears throat> there in life you have to find ways of de-stressing yourself and if you're stressed out all the time, you're doing too much work, and you're worried about timing, getting things done, like that wall I'm building outside. So the three walls, so two walls technically, a total of three walls I'm gonna build, but one of the walls I'm gonna have to wait till later. I yeah, I can only do so much, and that is one of the things I'm coming into the understanding of. Oh, this is an uncommon card. Is I am only human. I used to. to uh, take care of mental and physically handicapped people and I would tell one of my clients that I'm immortal I'm going to live forever guess what I think I might have been wrong about that being a mortal part but I do still plan to live to a hundred although my grandfather said that before he passed away um, and he stopped saying that at some point is what my mom says and you know, when the body starts, it's got to start getting hard to work and do things, as it is with my father. Um, you start not wanting to live because living becomes hard. And that's one reason is, like, we really need to work on relaxation, control, movement of our bodies when we get older. Um, and finding ways of de-stressing. And 
Uh, we've gone through a period of time as a country where that has been difficult. Um, so actually, as a, as a world. So I had an instant there. Um, where we are been stuck inside. Now, I'm not worried about the coronavirus. Um, <clears throat> even though I had a heart attack and that puts me at a little disadvantage now. Um... You know, I have enough medical knowledge that, you know, you want the antibodies. That means you do want to fight it, but, you know, you can't be worried about every little thing. That adds stress to the body, which makes you more accessible to the virus itself. So I just choose not to worry about it and realize what happens, happens. I cannot control things. And the more you try to control what is outside of your ability to control, the more stressed out you get. Um, and that's also part of my father's issues is... He has all of his life tried to control things and do things for his safety on things he doesn't understand based upon like his diabetes he does have. Um, and it has stressed him out and made life more difficult than safe for him. Um, and so, what can I say? It's, you know, you either choose to live worry-free or you choose to worry about everything. Um, oh, this is the goblin that you tap, um, and creature with power two or less, lesser can't be blocked. I like that one. Um, so I'm going to actually put that on the top, and this is the hound. I haven't made a dog deck, but I thought about it when I saw the dog cards in the previous series that I opened. And again, I wish I would have thought about recording it, but I'm doing a lot of recording right now and using other equipment, or learning how to use equipment. So let's go ahead and organize these. Again, we're going to doing Creature, Instant, Sorcerer, and I've noticed that I haven't really had many enchantments in these uh, in Zendikar. So uh, this is an enchantment week, but this is the first enchantment, Enchantment Aura. And there are several of those in this that I know I do possess now. Um, so we're going through here. Um, one of the decks I'm wanting to make is a base, just, you throw out instants and sorceries, and you keep on casting them. But the problem with that is that every single time you cast something, you throw that card right away. It doesn't stick on the battlefield. You need to be, find a way of protecting yourself. So, and I want to find a way of casting something multiple times. And so I'm just, it's one of those thought processes that are in the back of my head. So I'm looking for things that work with instances and sorceries. Um, and there was uh, several cards where the power of a sorcerer or instance is based upon how many instances and sorceries are in your graveyard. Um, but uh, then there's another one where you can cast from your graveyard, but you exile that ca that card from the graveyard if you cast it from your graveyard, which contradicts the other cards. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, so it's just going through cards, trying to figure out what you can do, and there's another enchantment aura, creature, instant, instant, creature, instant, creature, 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 instant, creature, 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 instant, instant, creature, instant, 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 creature, instant, creature, creature, um, yep, enchantment aura, creature, instant, creature, 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 and enchantment aura, and a hidden instant. So, generally when I was doing this before recording, that's how I do it. And that's the space that, that, that I do it in, but I'm focusing a lot about my talking and, you know, some strategy, just everything, because life, again, this is for worldwide, not just Americans, um has been difficult this last year. I've read several uh, texts given to me and things on Facebook. It's like, just mentioning 2020. What more will 2020 bring us? Believe it or not, in 2020, when the coronavirus hit, it more relaxed me than anybody else. I figured I was stuck at home, taking care of my dad. I can't actually work because... Even though I wanted to. Well, at that time my dad could see, so I could. But it's just, there's, it's stressful. Take care of dad. My dad is actually, I mean, I've taken care of mentally handicapped people for about 10 years. So I have a lot of experience in doing such. So it is stressful, but it's, you know, I kind of, I'm on call all the time. Which, it wouldn't be that bad if I wasn't going through some other issues. 
Um, and, um, yeah, I'm not talking about those issues. Those are the real issues. Dealing with levels of crazy that are beyond all imagining. imagining. Um, okay, so creature, creature, instant enchantment. So, again, I want to emphasize ordering your cards um, will help you make your decks. Knowing how you order them, uh, not just throwing them in the box. That just drives me absolutely the wall. Um, and so, again, enchantment's the last thing. I only have one enchantment, so it's going to start a stack right here. Sorceries, not much there as well. I think there might be only one. Yeah, for blue, there's only one actual sorcery, so we're just going to stack that on the enchantment. But we got a lot of instances, and there's a lot of creatures. So I think this is a very creature-based deck as well. Um, uh, this can go up here. And so, let's put this in order. <sighs> um, another thing I do is I keep I keep my tokens, my lands all in one place. Any, any source of mana... Um, that is considered a common source, I will keep that in another area. If it's not a common source, I will keep that with a main library. Um, and that's because it shrinks the main library, and then I don't have to go through all these. So, I mean, this is basically considered a common source, even though it's an uncommon card. Um, because all it does is tap for mana. So I keep that with the all in one area so that way I can find it easily and I don't have to search through all of those cards to find other cards to mix with, with a deck because one of the things is I, I like I have all these uncommon cards I still want to use them I don't know if you guys feel the same but I mean some of the uncommon cards are really great cards but they're uncommon um and there are just some that just really suck, and I've never used them. It's like, dude, I want to use this, but there's always a better card. Um, and that's why I instigated, and I recommend as a strategy for groups of playing, is that have your group, have a commander, and only build your deck based upon common cards. Uh, and see how much fun that'll be. I've had only one friend, oh, negate, so it's new art for negate. But I've only had one friend really speak kind of against it. But I think he'll do it because everybody else is going for it. And everybody else seems to kind of like the idea. Um, but again, I like to use what I have. And I have commons. Um, then, of course, you can make other decks which you, know, you only have commons and uncommons. But that's going to take away the focus from the uncommons. So I haven't added that into the group dynamics yet. Of deck making, so there are our oh, that's a, that's a creature card. All right, so just glancing over things, uh, over everything. This costs two. That's the most expensive. This costs one. It's a scry. Um, cost two. Cost two. And over here, cost two. Counter. So another negate. Um, the best thing about the negates is they're all already programmed, so I don't have to actually type those things in. And we'll go ahead and put these over here as well. Alright. So that's the instant cards. And along with this, it's cost one. That's the last of it. Alright. Oh, no. Okay, so I screwed that up. These are the cost in two. I stacked them on the wrong stack. Instances. Instances. Sorcery. Okay, there we go. I fixed it. So again, this will make it easier to put it into your library. For those of you that actually have a controlled library of your cards and all of your abilities. Uh, and let's see here. There we go. That's a creature. There we go. Yeah. And. Boom, boom. It's a lot of blue in these cards. So you kind of have to look and make sure you're putting in the right place. Um, that's why I do several steps because I will make errors. Um, make a little bit more errors now that I'm talking. But, um, hey, 
Most of you probably have nothing to do. You're sitting home with wanting to do something and you uh, already opened up your Zenicard boxes and hey, let's watch somebody else do it, right? Or maybe you're one of those people that you just haven't played the game. You kind of want to, but you don't know if you should or if you want to put your time into it. You don't want to risk going to the store, uh, to be honest with you. I think I mentioned before. Yeah, I mentioned before. Um, I don't give a flying crap about coronavirus. I go out, and only because we legally have to wear a mask do we do it. And even then, sometimes, um, and I think, and again, I don't really know what the law, uh, what the, what is imposed as, as a requirement out there. Um, I know that uh, what I'm stating is that any company, any business has a right to ask you to leave if you're not going to follow the rules that they're going to make. And so that's what I mean by knowing that legally they have to do that. Um, I've gotten to the point in my life where anytime I'm watching a movie and a law pops up, I'm going to look up that law. Um, whether it be a laws around murder or killing, I'm going to look it up because I want to know what our laws really say, not what the movies are telling us the laws say. And that's what I really discovered is um, our movies are telling us what the law, they think the law should be and what they think is right, but really that's not the truth. Our laws are not what they say it is. It's very simple laws too. Um, so... Um, I even read through the orders from the governor in Oregon, uh, got that from the police department when this first began. I haven't gone back it through again, but I wanted to double check what laws gave her the right to do this. Um, because as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I know some people say this is about safety, but I also believe there's a lot of fear mongering going out there by those in control and power. Um, Again, my dad is 73 years old. He does have his wits. He doesn't, so he has dementia, so he doesn't know how to do things like operate the VCR he's done in like 15 years. Like he's tried to turn on his TV. I'm oh, sorry, he's trying to watch a video cassette um, and realize that his TV's not on. He, does, he doesn't get that. There's a lot he's, I'm actually having to leave his TV on, so he, all he does is put in the VHS tape. He uses the eject button. He uses the pause button, and that's it. That's all he can do. That's where his mind has, uh, has, how weak his mind has gotten. Part of that is, again, he has not exercised his mind. Uh, and, of course, there, there's another part of what he has that is uh, the circulation of his blood. I won't get into the technical things of things. and I have to look some stuff up again for the technical name. But, again, my dad, he's not afraid of the virus. And I kind of only halfway joked before that, he would like me to go out and find Mr. Virus, take it home to say hi to him. Um, just because life is difficult when you're always afraid. And you don't know, and like the things you used to do that were very basic, you can't do. I can't even get him to go on a walk by himself anymore, so I have to go out and walk him. Which is great because, well, it was good in the aspect that I need to get more exercise because... I used to be this person where my instructor would tell me, do 50 push-ups. All right, can you do 50 push-ups more? Um, See so here, about five, six years ago, my boss wants to take care of mental and physically handicapped people. Um, he bet I couldn't do push-ups, uh, 50 push-ups. And I'm like, yeah, I can. I'm going to hurt afterwards, though. And he didn't believe me and said, if I can do 50, he'll do uh, 20. I got down there, I was at 48, 49, then my mentally handicapped client decided to put his foot on me and push me down. I th I'm, I'm almost 100% sure the boss got him to do it. But, and, you, and Brandon, I'm talking about you if you're watching this video. Um, yes, Brandon. Um, but yeah, uh, he didn't have to do the push-ups. Again, I think he got, got, got the client to do that. Which was alright. It was funny. But I did was sore afterwards. I mean, I've lost my endurance and that stuff. I'm in the process of gaining it back. Um, and a lot of that is because I had a job where I sat on my ass uh, on graveyard. Nothing to do. and uh, Except for going to the computer, type stuff up. Um, and uh, I'm a massage therapist now. 
and I still feel for those people in those environment and the people working there, working in that environment as well, especially those who have hard, have houses with really tough clients in there. I know my house was considered a high medical and high uh, behavior house, um, but in the what is it? Almost 10 years I was there, more like 9 or something like that, less than that, but by about 10 years I was there, I was the only person that was there longer than 3 years. Um, and that includes management. Um, very tough house to deal with. So, if you have the opportunity to help somebody out who does that work, uh, most of them aren't paying, paid very well. Um, do what you can to help them and give them a day where they can break. So they don't have a heart attack. Um, don't know how I got into that line of thinking, but yeah. Um, I know that I've had that I had clients that were uh, I massaged as a massage therapist that worked in that environment. So uh, it can be an interesting conversation. So okay, right now we're organizing our sorceries. I'm guessing there's only, only going to be about four or five of them. There's the fifth sorcery. Um, so again, it makes organizing easier when there's less of them. Um, this deck is definitely a high creature deck. Um, I'm sorry, this set is. I'm screwing up here. Uh, um, but again, I cannot say the importance of organ organization. In fact, this girl I know, one of the cutest things, oh, one of the things I really liked when she came over my place was uh, my brother had been watching Stargate. Um... I'm talking Stargate SG-1 all the way to Atlantis. And he has a tendency to not put things back. He will stack stuff. He has stacks in front of his TVs of things he's watching, different things. And so he had stacked all the things and he never didn't put them back. And so I was having them over and I wanted to clean house because, let's be honest with you, she's hot, she's sweet, she's a pain in the butt. Don't get me wrong, I'm going to say that. Um... She's the most wonderful woman on the face of the earth, despite the fact she's a pain in the ass. Um, that was only two instances for green in this set. For again, again, we're only working with the common cards, and this makes it easier to program them in as well. So, having these separate organizations, and then all of the, they're in, when I, they're in my, when they're in their, my primary library, commons and uncommons are kept together. So, um, sorceries instances. There we go. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Um, hmm, yep, totally lost my train of thought. It's gone. Ah, oh, creatures. So green is usually creature heavy. Um, let's see here. Uh, I know at one point I was playing Dungeons and Dragons, and I can't remember why, but I was playing and DMing for a guy, uh, and I had, I don't like spiders. I don't like him at all. And I was using a spider creature in the game, and I'm like, no, no, I'm never going to do another spider creature again. It's kind of creepy. I hate spiders, and it just creeped me out playing it in a D&D &D game. Um, I have a spider insect creature over there, and it's like, ugh, that's how I'm feeling. But if I ever do an insect deck, I might not have a choice. So I will not make that comment. Um, so again, there are a lot of creature cards here. Um, oh, I really feel my back. Gotta learn to sit up straight when doing this. Uh, especially since I was using that, my muscles out there. I was really tired last night. Because, um, again, I'm building the wall. I highly recommend learning how to do building walls. There's a lot to learn. Um, but, actually, there's a lot of exercise to it, too. So, And I know I need the exercise. And, again, I'm trying to build back my endurance, my stamina... My strength, uh, muscles, uh, muscle building, not really, but um, that might come later on after I lose the extra poundage. Um, again, when you work on graveyard, you sit on your ass the entire time and you're doing nothing but on the computer. 
Uh, you spend a lot of time tired because you're up so late and you're kind of bored. All right, so threes go together. So that costs four mana actually. So that's the last of the four mana. This is a five. This is a six mana cost. I'm going to stack the twos on top of that and the ones on top of this. And there we go. So it's, yeah. All right, there's our green stack. So this is the last of the organization of just the common cards. So I'm probably split this in two different videos. And this is another way of seeing you what you get from a full deck too in the aspect of just being common cards. And sometimes, I mean, I know I, I have 20 of one common card. So I made a common deck, a traditional one, not a commander deck, just for common cards. Uh, and I, they're basically is to teach people how to play. Uh, I have a niece who's 13, going to be 14. I think she's 25. Um... Stuck at home doing school right now, uh, but I intend to teach her how to play. I want her to enjoy. Um, well, I want her to enjoy things, but I also want her to work on something that involves mind work, strategy. Um, yeah, I will share this. I thought about this earlier today. Um, I have a reading issue. I do not read things well, but because I've done certain things, it allows me to practice on it. Reading just books in school didn't work. I didn't teach very well when I was a kid. My mother took me home for homeschooling for a while uh, before I went into high school. Um, but really, the um, it, because I enjoy it, it allows me to practice it. And for my niece, who also has difficulties in some areas. Um, oh, this doesn't need to be here. Oh, put that up there. Um, it's really nice to have her doing something that involves strategy because it'll work on her brain muscle on strategi strategizing. One of my greatest compliments I've ever received as a massage therapist was I am a tacticianer when it comes to massaging. I love that comment. I put it on my list of high great, of just amazing comments. Um, I have one from martial arts. I have several from martial arts. I've done that for so long. One person, uh, one instructor used me as an example. Look at him. He had me at attention. I was at peace. And then he had me uh, go into a fighting stance. Look at him now. He looks like one of the scariest guys you'll ever meet. You do not want me to run back out alley. You bring him back to attention. It's like a light switch. Um... There's no real anger there, but there is an intensity there. Uh, that intensity has also kept me out of fights. Um, so, after the coronavirus was going on, and the lockdown had happened, I was at the Beaver Mall, walking back to my uh, truck, when I had four guys coming out, um, coming onto the Beaver Mall area. One guy was really angry. I don't know why. Um, I wonder if he was maybe slightly intoxicated. I mean, there's a possibility, but there's no real evidence to support that. And I'm big on having evidence. Um, but he was being followed by three other guys. Two guys at one point circled around him and had him between them. And the moment he, the guy in the back grabbed his arms, I made sure that they, they knew I was watching or they were being watched. All the same enchantment here. And again, they're of color and I'm a white dude. And so the fourth guy that was walking started cussing at me, telling me how he was going to kick my ass. And this is pre-heart attack before exercising. Um, I was 280 pounds. I'm now about 200, right under 250. So... Uh, I'm losing poundage. I've gained muscle and again my legs because I'm using them again. Um, but <clears throat> um, he basically didn't like me as a white guy, I think. Telling them. But they, I mean, they, dude, two guys surround another guy. guy. I mean, it looks like it's about to be a fight. Um, and I'm not going to let some innocent guy get beat up because he's some other color. That's what, that, that's what freaking racism is, is. But this black dude decided to, and no, I'm not going to be politically correct and call him off from American. 
if he wants to be, or people of color want to be all pissed off because I said black dude, you can be pissed off. And you can also kiss my white hairy butt. Alright, anyway, now that I've ranted about stupid ass racism that doesn't actually exist and is only created by true racists. Um, and by the way, I will also comment that when I sit down, my friends, I've literally said, you guys do know I'm the only white dude at this table, right? Yeah. All my friends are of color. In fact, Reese, uh, so over the last year, I have another friend, Daniel, who we just, uh, I mentioned, like, I, I thought, uh, I thought that Daniel was white. I was all like, he's white skin. Well, apparently he's only half white. So, but those are my friends. I don't give a flying shit about race or color. And I'm, yeah, anyway, in this fight, or fight that was about to happen, I want to make sure my presence was known because I'm not going to let this dude by himself get surrounded and get beat up. Um, and that's where it looked like it was going. So, I made my presence known by yelling, Hey! And this one dude started threatening, telling me he was going to come over there and kick my ass and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I don't back down. Uh, when you back down, you show fear. So I immediately said, yeah, I very much doubt that, and I called him Tinkerbell. Again, he's about 100, 200 feet away from me, somewhere in there. He immediately stopped and did not move any, any, any closer to me. One, because I didn't show fear. Um, but I was concerned, mostly for what I was going to have to do if that guy continued to start coming my way. Um, I'm not going to let a guy start a fight that can cause me physical harm without responding. I don't care what color of skin they are, stupid racists that do care about color of skin. Um, and basically, if this guy had started something, the moment he did, he threw a punch or something, I was going to break something. I knew I was at, uh, uh, I was out of shape. I did not know at this time I was going to have a heart attack. I was two or three weeks away from a heart attack at this time. Um, and all I knew I was out is that I was out of shape. Really out of shape. So, I was ready for it mentally. Uh, but he didn't want to come any closer to me, which was good. And these guys knew they were being watched. They knew if they started to fight, the police were going to be called, because I also made that threat as well. And they decided to start walking off. The guy that was angry, um was still angry, and I got in my truck and started leaving. As I left, another a security guard I saw was coming that direction, and he was moving straight in that direction. I think somebody else had reported it. And so I drove my truck over to where he was and told him what had happened, so he ended up calling the police at that time. And so, I again, it was police reported. Um, but, you know, the... It doesn't matter what color skin somebody is. There are a whole bunch of a-holes out there. Um, and they think they own the world. And you have a choice. You can either show them that you're afraid of them, or you can stand up and say, Bullshit, you come near me, you're putting your life in your own, in your own hand. Because I know if you're going to attack me, my life is in danger. Um... And you really got to make sure that uh, legally you know what laws to... And I kind of, kind of talked about this earlier. Why I look up laws. As a martial art instructor, um, I would teach certain things to make sure people know what rights they had. I wanted them to know that, A, you have the right to defend yourself. Um, B, I want you to know that even if you're a woman, you can get in trouble for pulling a gun on a man, even though he's a threat to you. Um, and, uh, to be honest with you, I'd rather, I'd tell a woman it's better for you to be in trouble, uh, than for anything horrible to happen to you. Um, that's my own personal opinion. Um, that is not any advice I'm trying to give. Um, you can make a decision for yourself on that remark. Um, but I want to make sure those I care about are loved and, you know, are protected. Um... And again, I have a 13-year-old niece. You mess with that girl, and you're going to find a world of hurt coming your direction. I will not put up with a person or an individual who's a threat to somebody. And do you hear the word I use, a threat? 
There's a difference between somebody who's not a threat and a threat. Anyway. Um, Alright, we're stacking all of these in cost order. So somehow, while I was talking, these... Yeah, there's more of those somewhere around here. So cost of one. Oh, these are instances. That's what's going on. So instances accidentally made it into my creature deck. And that happens. Another way of, again, it's organizing for the whole. So I'm just going to fix that problem. There we go. And now we have all of my white. Uh, sorry, all my white are completed. Which means all my commons. And this is opening up two boxes. One that was already was repacked by another player, another, another person. That's what I got. So, I'm going to go ahead and break on this video and start another video for doing the same thing with the uncommon cards. And there's going to be more um, different cards in there. So, it won't take, it won't be, again, this is the uncommon stack. So, let's go ahead and break that and I will see you guys later.